John um, JCC John Chang Chung is a Wyoming Jamaican Canadian poet and writer born in Scarborough, Ontario, Canada. Informed by a multicultural racial background and one of the most ethnically diverse neighborhoods in Canada. JCC's central theme includes identity, the human connection, and a healthy sprinkling of romance. And we are very curious to hear your poetry, John. Let's um let's hit it up. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Um <clears throat> so thank you, Creative Morning. Um, specifically, thank you, Mar, uh, because you reached out and you personally invited me to do this. So um, today, we're, I'm going to be presenting three different poems um, representing resilience. One in terms of reconciling my past, so it's resilience um, in regards to, to my past, resilience um, in the present time, and then how we move forward with resilience. So the very first poem, which, which is in regards to the past, is A Glass of Soul Rio. <sighs> it was written that the first people were pure-blooded, and eventually it was written in pure blood. You see, the lust for a new exotic type trickled down their lips. Thrusted from the arms of mothers and fathers, taking jaws, fingers, and hearts. Lives lost forever, even if there was still a three-four beat. Flight of voices still pounding like a drum, still pounding full of tradition, even if masked by gospel song. Mixed children taught to be indoors with the pretty ones, they and master say. He looks well learned, she looks fair, no burns, and you wonder why we have a racial complex. And I wonder why they're still called red. And you wonder why we hate those that share the same blood with our physical traits. We hate each other for the same, well, sorry. We value but hate the blood taint. A history that wasn't written but tattooed, seared into our eyelids like we're staring into an eclipse. Well, ain't that some shit? We hate each other for the same reason they hated us. And that's why I fought with my own understanding. With my slide to the eyelids, high nose, hairy ass legs, kind of brown-ish skin, I don't really know. I mean, I've dug hard to understand my whole lineage, but I don't look Scottish, I don't look Lebanese, I don't look African, I don't look Chinese. At least to me, I look Jamaican. Nah, you don't look Jamaican. I can tell you about the transatlantic slave trade, riding the trade winds all throughout the Great Antilles. I can tell you about the Maroons and how they escaped the plantations to settle with the remaining indigenous. I can tell you about the Scottish and, and, and that wanted to be seen as fair and came to get a piece of theirs. I can tell you about the Lebanese that came to JA as a safe haven. Or maybe it's the indentured servitude of the Chinese. Nah, you don't look Jamaican. Vex is this type of test I get thrusted into. Like my story is buried so far deep that some refuse to see it. So all they need to do is focus. And that's what it really is. I, I know it's there and the story has to be told. Whether you like it or not, it can't be erased. Lost no more, but found forever. I am a Jamaican and this history is our connecting shackles. And in these chains, we can free ourselves. So pass me a glass of so real. Thank you. So that was the very first one. Um, so uh, I, I, so as you can tell, like from the from the piece, um, so I'm mixed race, and as well, uh, coming from the Caribbean, um, sometimes like these, a, a lot of the the constructs and stuff that, I, that people have based around the people there, um, trickle down onto preconceived notions, um, that are thrust upon me. So yeah, um, so the next one is resilience of the presence. Uh, so this one is called backwards vintage, backwards vintage where the reverse gear shifts to another time. It's almost futuristic how they predicted the future. Too bad they had no idea how backwards we'd end up. We value things over life. We value property over integrity. We value who we're around over who we are, just to prop up a value that can erode at any moment. To behold beauty in something that is past its prime is to see beauty in yourself. It's to see beauty in the world at hand. It's to find beauty in the present because the present is our past and our future. Sweet, thank you. And then the last one is resilience into the future. So this one's called Ink Spills. The rain dances on freshly bloomed flowers like the tears of a newborn, a reminder that life is ready to play out its course. Blank pages unturned, unmarked, and ready for volumes to be written. Some words are carefully chosen, like indoor plants being placed outdoors when the temperature is right. And others haphazard, like rain on rooted trees. They didn't choose to be planted, they simply grew. Ink to paper, what would come out? No one knew. Some outcomes are chance and less expectation, throwing the situation, circumstance, and blessed unknowns bearing the sweetest fruit. 
We can only try to predict our lives, a sperm to an egg, one in a billion ratio I've heard. Okay, okay, maybe my numbers are wrong, but you get the idea. But isn't it crazy that, that we made it here? A bunch of aliens breathing alien air. I mean, I'm not a billionaire yet, but I think we're pretty blessed. And this may be offhanded, but I can't keep my hands off this life that, that I was born to bear. And I choose to live this life rooted in all that I care. And that's it, y'all. Thank you so much uh, for having me again. I am so, so honored to introduce you to Joseph Piranian. He is a lifelong starter turned global TEDx speaker on inclusion and resilience. Born and raised in Lebanon, where he's actually right in, yeah, like uh, connecting from right now. Jose avoided speaking for more than 25 years out of the, of the fear of being judged for being different. Then everything changed. He won the Inspirational Speaker of the Year, delivered two TEDx talks, and has performed in hundreds of stand-up comedy shows in three continents and three languages. So this is just like a short bio, I'm sure, like... Uh, you, you would be amazed to see how um, Jose has grown and he has been uh, appearing in like global news and, and everywhere because he is such an amazing uh, human being and is like everything that Creative Mornings represents. So please welcome, just uh, give us a welcome in the chat and Jose, we are ready for you. Thank you for this warm introduction. It is true. I do have a stutter. Your internet is working just fine. At the count of Three, I want everyone to say their first name out loud. One, two, three. Shirley. Courtney. Hi. Easy, right? My whole life, I have had a severe stutter. And before learning this breathing technique to control it, the mere act of having to say my own name was terrifying. I avoided speaking every time, every time that I could. And when I could not avoid it, I felt shame embarrassment and anger. Why me? I hated myself. I hated that I was unable to say the words to express my thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Once at a house party as a teenager, I meet this girl and we hit it off. We start holding hands. And then she asks me the same question that I asked you all moments ago. She asked me what is your name. My name used to be the most difficult word for me to say. 
So I respond with and as I am struggling to tell her who I am, she lets my hand go and walks away. Was it something I didn't say? This basic act of speaking that everyone else did so effortlessly was mission impossible to me. I had enough something had to change robert frost once said the best way out is 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 True. To me, the, that meant the only way I would ever over, overcome the pain and the shame of being different would be by repeatedly doing the one thing that I feared the most. Speaking. First, I joined Toastmasters. Who here has heard of Toastmasters? If you have, please write TM in the ch chat. Yeah, I was expecting a community like this one to be super familiar with personal development. And public speaking was beyond scary for me. In fact, in my second year of university in Montreal, I begged my professors to exempt me from every single presentation. In my fourth year, however, I joined the debating club where I realized that what I say matters far more than how quickly I say it. In the past three years, I've performed stand-up comedy in three continents and three languages. I stutter in six different languages. I stutter in English, tartamudeo in Espanol, je bégue en français, peut-être l'arabe, gamatsko khosim hayerenov, y tenho uma gagueira in Portuguese. If, by the way, you speak one of those languages, Please write yes in, the, in that language, in the chat. I'm intrigued to, to see. Oh, OK, we have, we have, we have so, some Portuguese, a lot of French, some Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> With these six different languages that I stutter in, I can test people's patience internationally. <laughs> I am still at the beginning of my journey. And to be honest, I went through so many ups and downs. 
In fact, if you go through ups and downs, please write ups and downs in the chat. In these weird times, it's super important to know how common our isolating feelings are. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Every time that the negative emotions of my past resurfaced, I tackled them by going outside or to the mall before the pandemic, where I would challenge myself by talking to 100 complete strangers every single week. Over several years, I must have talked to tens of thousands of complete strangers in cities all around the, the world. The exercise was tough, the draining and uncomfortable, but it is through repeatedly exposing myself to the source of my fears that I managed to overcome this. I confront my adversity one word at a time. And while my stutter is visible, yours might not be as obvious. <laughs> if you've ever held back due to fear, please write, I have, in the chat. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, Natalia, Ch Cheryl, Magdalena, Henry, and everyone else. But in a way, you all stutter. When you wish to speak up in, in a meeting, whether it is virtually or in person, and yet you remain quiet, that's your stutter. <laughs> when you've been wanting to launch a new initiative in your community or, or learn a new skill, and yet the fear of failure holds you back from taking that first step, that's your stutter. When, when you want to say hello to someone and yet the fear of rejection holds you back, that's your stutter. Every time we succumb to our stutter, we shrink our destiny by stripping away countless possibilities. That time you, you, you did not speak up in that meeting might have been a day you were going to share a very impactful thing that would have changed someone's life. That person you did not say hello to could have become a great friend or, hey, your soulmate. When, however, we face that fear, and endure the uncomfortable, our potential grows exponentially. And we truly become the, the makers of our des, 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 our Destiny. I want to share a s story. Who here has been to Austria? If you have, please write yeah 
in the chat. Hmm. Isn't it gorgeous? When I was uh, 10 in 2019, those trips that happened right before the pandemic, uh, I feel like we, we cherish th those memories so much. Actually, if you could write down the, the last trip that you took in the chat, It'd be great to activate some wanderlust as things hopefully open up again. Leslie was in Colombia. That has to be one of my favorite countries in the world. Mm. Absolutely love. Actually, uh, Candace, my last place was also San Diego in fe February of 2020. When I was 13 years old, I went on a family vacation to Austria. We were in Vienna for three days. On day one, my 13-year-old self sees this girl with red hair, and he finds her adorable. A few, a, few, a few seconds later, she gets into a taxi with, with her mother, and they leave. Day two, I am at the Museum of Music. And there she was, cute and cultured. My teenage self had excellent taste. I think about saying hello to her because two consecutive days in a big city is an astounding coincidence but as i am the drowning in my own thoughts she once again vanishes day three folks this is my last day in, in vienna i am having lunch with my parents my sister and this couple that we met at the hotel. My father proceeds to tell them all about the girl with the with the red hair. And as with any teenager being teased about his crush does, I look away embarrassed and with incomprehensible statistical absurdity, I see her. Everyone at the table starts cheering for me. Three Days in a row, they say. You have to speak to her. Alas, the third time oh, was not a charm. I just sat there, frozen with anxiety and paralyzed by one single thought. What would she say when she hears me stutter? Today, I still 
stutter. And I still feel fear. So if neither my stutter nor my fear have changed, what has? If I can go back in time and talk to my old self and share three things. First, I would tell him it's okay to be different. Own what makes you unique. In fact, let's do an exercise. If you've ever thought of yourself as being different, please write, I am different in the chat. <laughs> hmm. Two, use fear as a compass that guides you where you need to go. I've done hundreds of stand-up comedy and speaking engagements on inclusion and resilience at conferences, companies, and comedy clubs. And I come back with good news and bad news about fear. Which one do you want to hear first, good or bad? Okay, let's start with the bad. This, this is obviously a group that's just been through a global tra traumatic pandemic and that wants to, to get the bad out of the way and to end on a high note. The bad news is that fear never goes away. The good news is that fear never goes away. If we know that something is a constant, why wait for it to miraculously disappear before we start taking action. Kelsey, absolutely love this. Womp womp and whoop whoop. This, this literally made my month. <laughs> the third thing I would tell him is stop expecting a breakthrough. Often people will ask me, Jose, what was your turning point? To me, that question is based on a romanticized understanding of change, heavily influenced by Hollywood, where all you need for transformation is a single moment when something just clicks. And then you go and you run under the rain as dramatic music plays in, in the background. I'm sorry to say, I have not found that to be the case. For me, it was millions of micro moments of bravery where I repeatedly did what I did not want to do again and again and again. I'll conclude with a quote. One of my favorite quotes of, of all time. The Sufi poet Rumi once said, why do you stay in prison when the door 
is so wide open. Silence was my self-imposed prison. What's yours? And when will you escape? Thank you. Thank you, Jose. That was so powerful. Everyone, please give us give us your your comments on the Bravo. Everyone is saying thank you. This is the best Creative Morning Stock I have ever attended. I think it's mine too. <laughs> and um, yeah, just so powerful. I'm, I want to share one of the comments I read on the on the chat from Leo, and he said. Your story and journey personifies resilience in the best way, Jose. And as I said in the beginning, you are everything that Creative Mornings is about. And we, we are all about like um, trying to inspire uh, courage and, and like inclusion and just like getting out of your comfort zone and, and just like <laughs> uh, overcoming our fears. This is like so, so... Um, you're like a, our creating morning speaker star right now. I start. Thank you so much. And now we're going to uh, head over to our um, Q&A. So please, if you have any questions for Jose, write them down in the chat or contact Ivan. And yeah, and I'll say uh, thank you for these kind words, Mar. The 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 comments and messages in the chat are extremely heartwarming. Do feel free to connect after this on on Instagram at yes way Jose J O Z E or Z E if you're tuning in from from the U S. And LinkedIn is just my my full name. There is a guide on my website for, for overcoming fears that can be easily downloaded as well. And now I'm super excited about answering some questions. All right, well, let, let's jump in then. Jose, how's it? Uh, thank you so much for the talk, my friend. And uh, uh, thank you, Ivan. It was wonderful having you lead the first session you have an amazing energy <laughs> it's all downhill from here <laughs> no uh, but i wanted to well, actually the first question was someone sent me as a private message and i'm hoping that maybe uh you could talk to this because it was my question too could you describe the actual breathing technique you're using and how it kind of works, like how it was explained to you in terms of how it worked. And if we could, um, we could take the the share screen off so we can see Jose, please. Yes, yes, yes. Wait a minute. Oh, is that you? Sorry, Jose. <laughs> I thought it was our side. Right. You yeah, can... yeah. No, I uh, I completely forgot. I I still had that on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll share your contact on the chat. I I learned this breathing technique on a speech improvement course in the UK. How it works, it's through the chest. I take a deep breath every few words and it allows me to control the stuttering to some extent. It is separate from the other types of breath work I do. I'm a big fan of Things like w Wim Hof breathing. If you are, please write Wim Hof in the chat. I'm sure a lot of us in this type of group is all about these methods. So I do a lot of, of, of that type of breathing as well as mindfulness and meditation as a key pillar for resilience. So those are, are two of the okay. other types. The one that I use for stuttering specifically is through chest breathing. And it's because when I sing, 
I don't stutter at all. And it has to do with, right. with the fact that it is, I believe, the, the, ch I believe the chest that is used. Yes, that's interesting. So you break, I, I guarantee you, Jose, I guarantee you every single person right now is doing it. I guarantee everyone's like, I guarantee you everyone's doing that right now. Um, it's just like in the King speech and the singing and he was, so you're fine when you sing. Yeah, and in fact, uh, I could really relate to the, to the movie, the King speech. Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, it's about a, a former king of England who had a, a who had a difficulty getting his words out. As you can imagine, I could really relate because it's not always easy being a king. <laughs> so I have heard, sir. So yeah. I have heard once in a while. But I had another interesting question that is kind of related to the topic of your improvement. So um, Elena asked, how did you know you could improve? How did you know you could get better? It was this desire to not squander my potential. Mm. Okay. I believe one of the biggest tragedies that can happen in life is unfulfilled potential. And for more than 25 years, I avoided speaking out of the fear of being judged for sounding different. And I knew that because the, the obstacle seemed so insurmountable and radical, I knew that the solution had to be proportionately radical. Mm -hmm. It and hence the stand up comedy, the public speaking, and me having talked to tens of thousands of, of complete strangers. And why not karaoke? That's the question I, I answer. Uh, if, if, if the, if the, attendees who we have right now light up the chat i will grab my guitar and do a one minute performance and uh, let's see what happens in the chat first i i will let i will let you decide on that one jose you can look at that okay for okay okay you and everyone one sec okay go for it dude go for it this is a a song that is all by using our voice whatever that means for you and i wasn't this this was not planned at all by the way i can attest to that i can attest to that one mentioned the whole singing in the king's speech so here we are Okay. <clears throat> You've got the words to change a nation, but you're biting your tongue. You've spent a lifetime stuck in silence, afraid you'll say something wrong.
Bravo, good sir. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> I get I was I was I had to fight the urge. Oh, where'd you go? I had to fight the urge to not jump in as a duet there. Good song. I also it's a great choice of a song. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh that was great. Have a little applause there, everybody. Jose, we got enough time for a couple more questions. And I had a, a question that was come that came in as a private message. And I'm trying to get to everyone's everyone. So please thank you for sending your questions in. Is it always the first thing you say to let people know? Do you always have to establish the rules of communication socially? Like when you come in to do a speech, people already know. But like when you're just hanging out, for example, are, do you introduce that this is how you're going to speak? How does it work? That's an amazing question. Super insightful. Whoever asked this has really high emotional and social intelligence. It used to be this, this taboo subject that I was so afraid of bringing up that silence was my only way mm. out. And as soon as I started acknowledging it, something amazing happened. It was no, it, it was no longer this hidden obstacle that got eh, in the way, I was able to look, acknowledge this aspect of myself. And that is why the stand-up comedy was such an important part of my journey. It's because it empowered me to change the narrative that I had with myself around being different. And by joking about it, it allowed me to, to break the ice socially as well. So when I do go to a gathering and I meet new people, it, it has become the first thing uh, I bring up. And if I am, yes, absolutely, abs absolutely humor is healing so if 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 i am at a, at an event with people that also happens to to serve alcohol in those events i will say hello i am not completely wasted or anything i i just have a stutter so it has become something that I weave into the social, the social interactions. Interesting. And speaking of social interactions, we got enough time for about, oh, I'm going to sneak in two. Let's sneak in two. Okay, sure. Jose? Uh, uh, yes, I'm um, um, flexible. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to combine two. This is your question challenge, Jose extra challenge for you because it's not challenging enough to speak right <laughs> i'm going to combine two questions one why did you choose the field of psychology as your area of study and if you could do things differently if you could go back to that first meeting with like when you were going on that you met that girl uh what if you could from that point moving forward what would you do differently hmm. there question challenge sir question challenge yeah so the First half of the question, I definitely chose. So when I went to undergrad at, at McGill in Montreal. I went to McGill. Cool. And by the way, before, <laughs> before my first ever Montreal winter, I didn't, I didn't even have a stutter. I've, <laughs> I've just internalized all of that. Horrible pain. 
<laughs> Shivering. <laughs> yeah. They're the worst, dude. They're the worst. Absolutely. So I, I ended up majoring in psychology within the b- business school. And it was 100% because I, I wanted to better understand myself and others. So I took c- classes like social, social psychology and, and motivation and, and personality, interpersonal relationships. I really wanted, as someone who had isolated himself in, in the cocoon of his own silence, I, 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 really, I really wanted to immerse myself in, in that field. So, so that's that question. And, and the second one, what, what, what would I do differently? I would, it's, it's tied to the previous question. I would, I mean, the one before that, I would mention it. I would, I, I would not think of it as this, this, this thing I have to be constantly, uh, sh- I, I might be getting a bit, uh, uh, a bit emotional. Uh, this thing that I am constantly ashamed of. And I think mentioning it and owning my uniqueness would have made a huge difference. And even though I tend to speak mainly in corporate settings, I every time that I have spoken at a school or a university, it 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 it, it has been really powerful because this is a message I wish I had heard when 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 I was an insecure teenager who who held back in every way imaginable and one last thing I'll say about this this second part of the question is a a a mindset shift I wish I had had back then was that fear and action are are not mutually ex ex exclusive. Fear and action can coexist. And I think that is such a, a such a life changing insight that I wish I had had back then when I had my Vienna moment. I'm sure we all have our own Vienna moments <laughs> in life. Vienna moment, bravo. You know, Jose, I think uh, I'm gonna, that should be the tagline. Let's make that the tagline. Everyone's gonna have their own Vienna moment. I think that's a lovely uh-huh. way for us to wrap it up for today. So everyone, one last time, um, in the style of Jose, I'm gonna ask everyone in the chat as a way to say thank you and a way to do applause, please share your favorite emoji. Please share your favorite emoji. If you have a Mac, it is control command space bar. If you have a PC, it's window key and semicolon, I think it's what you, or, or period. There you go. So please share your favorite emojis in the chat. And if you can't just give me a full colon half bracket. There it is. There's the, everyone's favorite emojis. Jose, thank you so much for being here with us today. That was a, a great, great speech. And I think a lot of people benefit both in terms of knowledge and in terms of uh, starting the weekend off right. 